Eden's running ahead because she's embarrassed of you. <laughs> We are going to our weekly family business meeting. Every Tuesday, same time, same place. Bye, Sierras. We didn't have a lot to talk about our, our meeting today, but we talked about what furniture to put under our new gazebo and what kind of what we want that space to look like and to help facilitate it's really hot today it was so hot in the coffee shop that i didn't really want to sit there for very long and i didn't even really want to have coffee it was weird Oh, you picked strawberries for us? Yes. Thank you. And me and, and Harmony. You and Harmony. Nice. Close my eyes? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm closing them. Surprise! Surprise! Oh, wow. Nice. Where'd you get those? From the plant. You got them from the garden? Hey, where are you going with us? Hmm. Um, maybe later. <laughs> Rainier wanted to close the door, but my mom wanted to leave it open, and so I put it open again after. back at him and now he's mad. What happened? Um, yeah. Mommy threw it back at me. Oh, did you throw it at her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you not like that? No. I gotta tell you guys the story of what just happened today. So Seven is out front filming some sort of video for himself and he comes and says, this guy on a bike knew my name and said he was biking to Florida. And I was like, what? And we're like trying to put the pieces together. And he, he knew, he told him that he watched some of our videos. And I was like, he's biking to Florida? I mean, we don't live in a major area. Like we live in a town that's one mile squared that only has like 10,000 people in it. It doesn't have any major roads that go through us. So it's kind of weird. And he says, yeah, he was down at the library. So I like hop on my bike and cruise down to the library to try and find this guy to see if he needs anything. Cause if he's really biking to Florida, like that's basically like a hiker. And I know he'd want like a shower or a meal. Yeah. Sure enough, I walk up to the library and I see his bike. Look at this setup here. And I walk in there and the guy is sitting right there. His name is Chris. I say, come on back to our house. And he comes on back and he has a beer. And sure enough, this guy started in Michigan, 300 miles back, and he has 700 miles more to go. And he got lost. He had seen our videos. He knew we were in the Cincinnati area, but he didn't know we were in Bellevue. And he took a wrong turn and was heading to the library, which is where I found him. Well, he took a wrong turn literally on our street yeah. that we live and he had no idea where we lived and our street is like five blocks long like it doesn't go anywhere and it's a one-way street and he was going the wrong way on it i mean it's really funny yeah it's crazy and he just happened to see seven and recognize him so he came on back and he had seen all of our at videos so he knew the family i was like hey you want to spend the night you know, you could pitch a tent, but he said he had 30 or 40 more miles he needed to get today. Yeah. So he took a picture at least. One of those fun things, man. Mm -hmm. It's like you can get adventures delivered to your house with Amazon Prime now. I know. It's like just as convenient. But that was not the point of today's vlog. Today's vlog 
is about our transformation in terms of a parenting strategy we've been trying that I've never heard of people really doing intentionally. Context, six kids, 18 years old. Most of our parenting up until the last two years has been this certain brand. Like you see a fight happening, it's like... The parent's job to step in and just help them work it out or just completely diffuse it. Just stop the fight yeah. is what I was gonna say. I mean like sometimes work it out, but sometimes it's just like Cross stop up. fighting. I mean you literally just say that yeah. or we'd right. say like cut it out, don't hit the other person. I mean especially if it's at like the playground or something with some other kid, you know, it's uh, like... Then the social pressure goes really high to make sure your kid doesn't do anything to the other kid. But if we see our kids like pulling something, like I step in, be like, break it up and just like end it. If they're of course like fist fighting or something, like push them aside or just yell at them or whatever, just, just get it to stop, okay? That was strategy number one. We did that for 16 years and it's great. I mean, it gives you something to do. It's like a full-time job. Those are the pros. I'd say it's more than a full-time job. <laughs> okay. Overtime. A couple of years ago, we started trying something else. It was basically to let things just play out. That what if our job as parents isn't to constantly intervene into the kids working things out? Because in a way, and this is the belief system behind it, they're actually working things out in their own way, in their own methods. And what if we just get out of the way and let them work out. And instead of intervening and stopping a natural process, a very normal process that happens all over the place, we function more as a coach would, which would mean possibly afterwards advising if they desire or coaching if they want. Otherwise, letting the consequences of the actions themselves play out, play out and teach the kid. Mm -hmm. Okay you wanna slug it out with each other, go for it. Afterwards, when you're like bleeding and hurt, hopefully you come to the conclusion yourself, that didn't work out very well. Like, I wonder if there's another way. In which case, if the kids come to us and ask us that, we could say, yeah, actually in our experience, we found it's better to use our words and to talk about it. Of course, there's times in our own marriage where we've been physical, yeah, there it looks different with each of our kids depending on the age they're at. I would say it's the hardest for me to do this with Rainier. He's the youngest and he has he's the, the least equipped to deal with this type of thing. And with the older kids, I don't have much of a problem. Like sometimes if I'm like hearing the whole thing and my empathy meter goes up and I'd feel for one of the kids, then it's kind of hard for me to, to stay out of it. But for the most part, the older kids, I, f I don't feel as responsible for their stuff. But with Rainier, I see it the most played out with him and Fulia, especially because she's the next one to him in age. And he'll just like start hitting her. Finally, she just gets so fed up with it that she'll just like kind of push him. And he's like, ah! and I'm in the like, past, Whoa. we used to say, Flea, don't push him, which creates this really hard situation because it kind of teaches him that he can get away with it. We would like give a consequence for him hitting, which, yeah, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. I don't feel super good about breaking it up myself and dealing with it. And I don't feel super good about them just duking it out without any help. I mean, yeah, I'll be there later like a coach, but I the, still The feel problem like is what happens when they both want to duke it out? And in a way they've like come well, to that agreement and then we're stepping in and stopping if it. If they both want, that's how a fight happens is when two people want to duke it out. If only one person wants to duke it out, unless someone's just like beating the shit out of someone, usually the fight actually diffuses itself. So that just shows that if both people want to do it, there's something actually deeper going on. Yeah. And this is kind of stemmed from a bigger picture belief for us. In the past, I think we were a lot more wanting kids to just listen to what we said and kind of like skip these stages of pain so that they could arrive at our conclusions that we had arrived at. Mm -hmm. But I've kind of come to believe that there's not really a shortcut and that if we're cutting this fight short, 
but deep down if a kid believes that violence is the answer, by not letting them explore that, they're always going to be wondering and they're always going to be wishing. Now, even if it's not violence, but it's like some sort of control. Or retribution or whatever it is. You have control over the other And that person. I'd almost rather let the kids conclude that themselves to a point where they actually really believe it instead of always feeling like I need to insert myself, otherwise they're gonna kill each other. But it's hard to watch. Like, it, it's really hard to especially watch. Especially with Rainier, because he'll just get so worked up. Well, think about Dove and Seven, like four months ago. Yeah, that, that's hard. You're they right. had this all way, out brawl, where, where there was like blood and, oh, yeah. you know, wounds, and we're just there. And they're both like, basically adults in a way, and they were in some sort of war, and we just kind of decided, if you guys want to solve it this way, like, who are we to, like, stop you? There is a tricky part to this, and that is if, let's say if Rainier and Flea are duking it out, and Flea is twice the size of Rainier, let's say, like, he totally started it, let's say that, and then she just gets so mad, she just, like, pummels him, like, way harder than he did her. Which she doesn't do. Which she doesn't do. I'm just, I'm, I'm painting the scenario because that's when I would say I need to step in because this isn't, this isn't right. So this I think like right. we have two guidelines that I've seen. One is that we don't allow bullying and we want to defend the smaller. So if a kid, a smaller kid is like actually unable to defend themselves and getting bullied, I have a problem with that. And I would step in for that, no problem. Yeah. So it's not like mindless violence. But if the little kid hits the bigger kid and the bigger kid hits the little kid at the same level, which is kind of this principle of like an eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth. Growing up, I got the idea that biblically that that was like, that was wrong. But I later heard that that was actually an evolution. It's a stage of development. Like well, even, even with our kids, like where they're at, that's like... It is, but that's not what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Like an eye for an eye actually meant fairness. If I take your eye, figuratively speaking, I don't come back and kill you. That's like unfair. Right. But if you take my dollar, I should be able to, like justice is being able to take your dollar. Yeah. And that's that's part of like... like don't, a, you can't one up someone and be like... No, ah, that, that, that violates fairness. So. If Rainier throws a block at Flea's head, or I forget what happened today with Memory, and Memory throws the same block back at Rainier's head at the same speed, that's actually like justice in a way. Only she has better aim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. But part of this belief stems from, I don't want the kids to spend the rest of their life communicating via violence. I, I want them to move on. But how do we best get them to move on? And I think it might be not from prohibiting it, because you know you can't do it, but deep down you might still believe you, that you want to do it. But when you actually fully explore violence, you know, that's what the Count of Monte Cristo does really well with revenge. It says, okay, let's paint a scenario. Let's say you get the ultimate revenge of your entire life. Spoiler alert. Then what? They might read the book. Well, the book's that thick, and good luck. But it's actually different from the movie, and it doesn't work out well. Like, it's never what you wanted, the violent answer or the vengeful it's answer. It's never satisfying. You think it's going to be satisfying. But it is on some level. It is on a primary, primary level. Prim it is a, primal? Yeah, primal. I, think, I think it is primal. And it, it's like a stage that we go through in order to move on to what I think our deeper and more powerful tools and weapons, which is like forgiveness yeah. and compassion and mercy and empathy. But those are a step beyond yeah. justice. They don't subvert justice. You can see this really well, I think, with toddlers. Two toddlers, okay, they're, they're fighting over a toy. One toddler grabs a toy from the other toddler. The other toddler then at that point just like, Wah! or just grabs it back, pushes them, grabs it back. And so that's them, like, that's the level they're at. Now, you'll see people who are in their 50s and 60s, they're still doing this, but they're doing this in a way that it, does, it looks very much more... Uh, civilized. Civilized than maybe. I mean, I have actually <laughs> seen it not very civilized, but it is, like, just getting back. Like, okay, you did this, or at least I felt like you did this, so I'm going to do this. And that's not mercy or forgiveness or no. grace. But it takes like an, 
evolving or transforming of yourself to even be able to absorb it without being resentful of the person. Or retributive. Because I actually think if you're not at that level yet, maybe you sh should do that because then otherwise you're going to like build all this resentment. It's like more honest. It's more honest with where you're at. You're like, okay, I just want to hurt you. So, so like me. a very simple like breakdown of how we see forgiveness or how I've had it explained to me is like, if you hit me, forgiveness isn't saying, oh, that doesn't matter. Like, I don't care. That's not forgiveness. And usually that's false. Like, cause that's just like burying emotion or actual pain that was caused. But if you inflicted pain upon me, the natural payback, like what makes it justice is for me to inflict pain upon you. Like I owe you a debt, but instead of making you pay it, I'm paying it. And that's an advanced topic. Before you pay someone else's debt, you have to acknowledge that a debt exists. And that's part of where I think some of this pain comes in is like, that's a necessary stage. I mean, forget about discipline for a second or fighting with interpersonal relationships. Let's just talk about financially speaking. You know, if like, if I pay for something and you're like, oh, whatever, no big deal. Like, I don't care. I don't know anything about money. That's not actually like generosity. That's just obliviousness mm -hmm. um, or naivety. And with our kids, I want them to learn forgiveness and grace. But I think at earlier stages of parenting, we skipped past this like pain, the conflict stage because we felt uncomfortable with it. Like we felt like in order to be good parents, you gotta do this certain thing. You know, I know it can be weird, like watching two four-year-olds duke it out. And, you know, I, I'm actually not condoning violence. But if both people want it, it's more condoning freedom, free will for them to be able to explore that way of working something out. And me as a parent not coming down and judging it and being, you can't do that. That's bad. And instead saying, oh, this is a stage. And I hope you move beyond that stage. So I've noticed that if we allow it, it more gives me space like in a coaching capacity. And like I said, I think the things that have been helpful for us are to be available to debrief it afterwards and to be like, hey, how'd that go? Like, that must have been hard. Like yeah. I've been in situations like that and it sucks, doesn't it? Where you feel like you have to get back and it feels like that's the only and the best answer. And then to tell our stories of what it's like to use other methods and to show them what life is like from our perspective now that we are older and feel like we have other more mature tools. And for that matter, like we look at other stories, like, you know, that's part of why our family watched Game of Thrones is because that is a very violent show that ends very poorly for most of the people that use violence. And we were able to talk about that as a family and say like, okay, like what happens when violence is your primary tool? Like how well does that work out for people? Wasn't it like Gandhi that said, an eye for an eye will make the whole world blind? Or dead. Or oh, an eye for an eye will make the whole world pirates. Arr. Yeah, not have your glasses. <laughs> okay. What do you think? Are you up for even tr for trying that or for thinking about that? What would keep you from doing that? I think I used to have a moral problem with violence and I used to think that it was like intrinsically bad. Ironically, we probably used it more in that time period of life than ever before. But now I'm like, you know, it is what it is. People have been doing it for thousands of years. All right, can you believe it? It's time for our run. It's hotter than hell out here. I'm not really looking forward to this. Oh, yeah. it is. It's 80, 87 80. degrees. Well, hold on. 87 feels like 90. Cammy insists on the looking at that feels not too like. Bad, though. I Still appreciate 87 degrees. Feelings. It's gonna feel like 90. Yeah. Let's go. All right, who's going running? Are you guys both? Eden. You don't know? How are you gonna decide? Are you coming? Well, I want to. Uh, Cammy. I think you forgot your shirt. Nope. Free the body. Free the body. Uh uh. Free the body. Oh, yeah. Hey! That was a good one. It's really windy and it's like hot wind. So I feel like I'm running through a sauna right now. Eden's doing the long run, which means we're taking the dog. All right, dog, come on. 
All right, ready to go? Let's go, let's go. Oh, Leia, Leia, okay, come on. Come on, no, don't bite your leash, what are you doing? I just like was walking up these stairs. Started to get a little dizzy. I was like, oh, okay. <sighs> hey, look who caught up with us. You didn't, you did it. That was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, why? <I'm> so tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That run kicked my butt. That, that, Holly, butt kicked my butt. Yeah. yeah. I kind of felt almost like I was going to puke right when I got here, but I'm okay right now. Just trying to hydrate myself again. But, like always, I'm glad I did it. But Even I'm glad I did it too, because I went to go. Even the hard runs, I'm glad I do it when it's all said and done. See you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Ooh.